Hello, this is Joseph at Lightspeed. Sometimes we'll want to report on matrix products as if they were considered one unit, as if all the different sizes and colors of the matrix are considered the same item. Analytics can be very powerful when it comes to reporting on matrices, and these are some of the steps you can use to make the most out of your reports. Now, you may also be interested in the video in the Help Center that looks at using custom dimensions to create a matrix or an item. That could also be a good resource for reporting on products as matrices, so you may also want to take a look at that. So there are a few ways we can think about using matrices in reports. We could start by looking at a simple sales report grouped by matrix. Secondly, we could look at an inventory report by matrix. Third, we could look at pivoting on reports by the size or by the color. Fourth, we could look at using custom dimensions to redefine our size conventions, and I'll show you what that means in a little bit. So let's look at sales reports by matrix, and we'll begin with a simple sales report. Let's start with a recent sales report. So recent sales looks at daily totals this week, but let's change it up a bit so that it brings us a matrix sales report. First, let's change the filters. I'm going to open the filters. Let's say the sales complete date is in the past 13 months. Also, we don't really need the date on this report, so I'm going to hover over its gear icon and we'll remove it. Now the item matrix lives in the dimensions under item. We'll see a collection here called matrix. If I click on the little triangle, it will open up our matrix dimensions. So there's two things we'll do here. First, I'm just going to click on the word matrix. What this will do is add the dimension of matrix to our data. Secondly, I'm going to click on the filter where it says matrix. And I'm going to put a filter onto this report for item matrix is not null. This way, the only products that we see on this report will be our matrix products. Let's go up to the top right hand corner and we'll run the report. So now we have a sales report where all the products are grouped into the matrix collections. Similarly, we can use inventory reports to also report on matrices. Let's begin with an inventory report. A good inventory report to begin with is low stock alerts. This is showing us items that are likely to sell out in the next seven days. But let's remove the filters here so that it's not a low stock alert report. We'll remove the filter for days to sell outers between 0 and 7. We'll remove the filter for the quantity on hand is greater than 0. We can remove the filter for the item is on order. And we can remove the filter for the items on transfer. In this instance, we don't need the product description, so I'm going to click on the gear icon and remove it. We can also remove the metrics days to sell out. Let's also push up our row limit a bit more. Finally, let's add the matrix. Again, we see the matrix is under the dimensions of item. We'll open it up. We'll add the matrix. And again, we'll filter on the matrix is not null. Let's run the report. So now, this is giving us a complete list of inventory of products grouped by their matrices. Now we can develop further upon an inventory report or a sales report by matrix. One way that we could do that is by pivoting on the size of the matrix items. So we're back on the inventory report where we're looking at the quantity on hand within each matrix. I've also added here the quantity that sold over the past 13 months. Now let's say within these sales and quantities on hand, I also want to see what does this look like by size. To do that, let's go over to the item dimensions and we'll pivot on attribute 2. This is where the size lives. I'm going to click on pivot and let's run. So now we can see for all the matrices what size is sold and remain in stock. To this report we could also add totals at the bottom and row totals over on the right hand side. Let's run this one more time. So now I can see the quantity that's sold for each size within each matrix 
and I can also see the system-wide sales by size. Finally, let's take a look at the size conventions and how we can use custom dimensions to make them clearer. So what do I mean by the size convention? As products are created in Lightspeed, they may be entered with different definitions for attributes. For example, we see here that the large products are referred to here under the size of L, but there's also large products here using the size LG. These are probably the same size, but they were created with different definitions of large. We see the same thing for medium. So for example, medium is defined here as an M, but it's also defined here as MD. We see the same thing for small. That small is SM over here, but it's S over here. So we could use custom dimensions to gather attributes together when they should be considered the same. So to do that, let's go to our custom dimensions. Let's go to our custom fields. I'm going to click on where it says new, and we'll choose a new custom dimension. We'll write an if statement here, looking at the size convention, which is an attribute to. I'll start with this. We'll say if, then I'll start looking for attribute to, because that's where the size lives. I see it here. And I'm going to say if attribute to equals, between quotation marks, LG, followed by a comma, then we'll define that as L. That's the results if true, followed by a comma. And then if the attribute is not LG, we'll just return the original attribute, which is attribute 2. Let's call the size. We'll save, which will create a new dimension here. Now I'm going to pivot on it so that we can compare it to the attribute 2s. And let's run. So now we see at the size level, instances of the LG has been referred to as L, but we also have the Ls from the original L. So our custom dimension is working. Let's edit the custom dimension, and let's create a couple of rules now for the other sizes we'll say if the size is MD, define as M, and we'll see if SM, define as S. And we'll want the same number of brackets for each of our opening arguments. Let's save, and let's run. So now we see LG is defined as L, MD is defined as M, and we see that SM is defined as S. So now what we could do is remove the attribute 2. And let's run the report one more time. So now we see that all the sizes have been gathered together, the larges into one convention, the mediums into another, and the smalls into this one too. So some of the next steps you can do from here, you can also pivot on the color of the matrix if you'd like to report on the colors within a certain style. We could also run the dusty inventory report by size or by color to see if there's certain sizes or colors that are maybe overrepresented in our inventory. We could also report on customers by size using a custom measure of size to see how frequently certain sizes are sold to certain customers. So thank you for watching this video. You can find more resources here in our Video Hub Center and also in the analytics section on community.